Hi there, I'm your host Macaulay Tucker and you're listening to The Macaulay Tucker Show, the podcast where I sit down with some of the most accomplished and fascinating individuals in the entertainment and business industry. From celebrities to industry leaders, our guests offer unique perspectives and inspiring stories that will educate and inform you. Join me as I sit down with my next guest to cover their humble beginnings, challenges they faced, as well as their accomplishments in life. You are bound to learn something new, so sit back and enjoy the interview. Today on the Macaulay Tucker Show, we had a very special guest, Derek Miner. Derek Miner is an American Christian rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer, entrepreneur, actor, and screenwriter. On the show, we talk a lot about his life as a uh, Christian rapper and a lot of the challenges he's faced, as well as the accomplishments in his life. So sit back and enjoy this wonderful interview. You've lived um, a really fascinating life. You know, we all have our journeys, we all have our ups and downs but your journey has been very fascinating. You've kind of witnessed a lot of big things. And I kind of wanted to hear um, just kind of at the beginning from what I read um, with, with your mom's experience and such, how do you feel about the path you decide to take aiming for financial success through education and music, you know, at the time when you were younger, you know, going down that path, reflecting on that now, uh, how did you feel about that decision in general? Yeah, you know, it's really easy, I feel, to just say, I'm going to get, I always say this, for me, it's not just about making it, it's how I make it. Like, that's always been my thing. Like, it's really easy for me to get out here and tell everybody to go kill each other and and, and to tell the women that, you know, you ain't nothing but just, you know, a doll. You know what I mean? Like you're nothing but a play toy for me, but like that is not indicative of the lifestyle that I, the legacy I want to leave for my family. I want people to say that when it's all said and done, Derek opened the doors for me and he created opportunities and he blessed me. He left the world better, you know? So for me coming up, watching my mom work so much, like I feel like it would be a disgrace for me to think like, man, she did all that work for me to get an opportunity to say something and then I just say nothing just to get money. So for me, it's always about purpose. It's about creating things that matter uh, long after I'm gone. Like that's my whole focus. That really reminded me of what uh, another friend had to say when he came on, he shared about his experience with his mom and his name was Mark Christopher Lawrence. And he shared how his mother really established for him like how to to take care of himself, how to wash dishes, how to clean clothes. And that he explained to me much like how you explained here, how that really impacted him when he went off to college and university, like he had. Oh, yeah. And so I, I, I'm assuming that there was many aspects um, like that. And, you know, music, music is a big part of what is a big part of your family. and was uh, your father was um, did jazz, was a, a jazz guitarist. Yeah. Uh, for the life of me, I could not find for the life of me, I could not find anything online involving his work. And so I was, I was kind of left in a gray area, but I do know that that inspired you a lot. Yeah. I know since, uh, since you were, um, you did a lot of music with a mic and a, and a, in a, in a bed stand, you kind of did a lot of music yeah. and, uh, you were actually signed with a record deal with, uh, I think it's Sycon music or whatever it was Scion, called. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Scion with Jay, Jay ran that. Uh-huh. Oh, which is cool because he's doing a lot. He's working with a lot of big names now. So yeah. that was kind of like your original, like that was where you got started. The label was actually, from what I found out, they were doing a lot of music back in 2005. Yeah. They released, um, I think, a various album called Music for Your Ride. I couldn't actually find uh-huh. that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you you, you worked on Pro Presents, the pro show. That was kind of like your first, yeah. your, from my understanding, the first mixtape. It was featuring uh, Kizzy Curb. Coco, yeah, Cor- yeah uh, you know, these old head, <laughs> all these guys. So you kind of started there with this experience. So I kind of want to hear, you know, this first release, how on earth did this happen? And with that, like, are there any sort of like lyrics that you use, particular lines that you used when you were younger that, you know, in a writing way you still use now that we as an, a listener, I have no idea that that line you used when you were younger it's like a powerful line if you get that's a good question so um no i don't really have any lyrics from back then that i use but i do so the guy who helped me produce that record was called his name is sal salvador and he actually helped me learn about creating moments in a song and then my homeboy christopher ryan 
he was one of the first guys that's like, you need to rap and sing. And like, he kind of would always be pushing me to be this like self-sufficient artist that's producer, rapper, singer, all that, all in one. So I would say the foundations of the artist that I am today was based in, in, in that era. But yeah, that was just me and my college and high school friends putting the record together. And, you know, it, it was pretty dope. Like that was that that's what solidified the fact that I was going to be an artist and I was going to do this for a living because that was the first time I started really making money. Like my dad's music, it never came out because he just never really had a platform. You know, during the time when he was making music, you know, you couldn't just upload stuff to Spotify. Like you had mm -hmm. to have budgets, you had to have somebody pay for it. Uh, you know, records were expensive to make, tapes were expensive to make. And uh, he came from the hood. So it wasn't really a lot of, uh, <laughs> we didn't have a lot of money. So, but I have all his master recordings in my closet. I've always thought about cleaning them up and, and, and you know, sampling them or something like that. But yeah, man, definitely. That's great, man. No, it's really important to kind of like, you know, grow and kind of start somewhere. And it's yeah. really, it's a good point that you made, you know, in those times you didn't have the tools and the assets to do what you do now. And yeah. so you were able to kind of get your friends together. Um, I did that. How I actually started music um, was I had a friend of mine in the US and he was like, my brother is releasing Christian hip hop. I want to. And I was, I think, 15. I'm like, I want to help you with that. And so 15 year old me was like going around and it was it's so weird looking back. It was such a risk. It was so yeah. random. I didn't have any money. I didn't have a job. But I went around saying, here's a situation. A friend really wants to release a Christian hip hop song. Yeah. Can we get this beat for free? And looking back, I'm like, that's so, so risky. But look, we got blessed with something. We got a bunch of guys and we, we released it. Yeah. Um, nothing crazy. 15 year old me, I think it was like a thousand listens. And we actually got the song played once on the radio in the UK. It was just the first song. And it was like, it's so That's crazy great. that you're able to get these opportunities and, you know, hearing about that college experience, it's like, you know, with your friends and collaboration is a big part of that. Um, and you're, you've collaborated with a lot of really great people. I'll, I'll get to actually that in a yeah. little bit. Um, this is kind of going back to your, your story. Um, just, I was reading a lot about it and it really hit me hard. This one's a, a, a deeper one as well. You know, reflecting on your transition from pursuing, you know, the forbidden to experiencing personal loss and then ultimately surrendering yourself to a greater calling. Yeah. If you hadn't had that experience, that season of death, do you think you would have recognized the need to surrender and redirect your life's focus? Like how would your life look different if that hadn't happened? You know, I've, I don't know, man. Like I feel like God called me early in my life. Mm -hmm. And I think just as a person I think we look at our relationship with God like how we read the Bible. We read the Bible and we think that it's like, okay, and this person was this, and then he met God, and then that. And it's 70 years of a person's life bounced down into 60 chapters of a book. And we feel like that's how our life is supposed to go. But I feel like it's a journey. Like, I accepted God, and I wanted, you know, I wanted him to be my father when I was a kid. But this whole life I feel like has been him bringing me closer to him so now I look at the seasons of like death and how I reacted to that as that was an opportunity for God to show me his love even in the times when you know because we know death is going to come for everybody but how we deal with death that's usually based in culture and ideals and what we think and I think with my passion for God like that was an opportunity for me to wrestle with what I actually feel about losing people. And now as an, as an adult, I'm just more like, man, I've, I've boiled my life down to this is to enjoy it while I have it. That's it. You know? So with my grandfather, my grandmother, you know, with family members, my dad, I'm like, yo, anybody that's in my vicinity that I love, I'm going to be selfish and greedy with loving them as much as I can. And I think that that, that I think that was a revelation from God is like, people are not going to be here forever. So enjoy it. Be selfish, be selfish Absolutely. with relationships with your people you love. It's really cool that you mentioned that. Um, I was reading um, JC Ryle today, um, thoughts for young men. 
And it's just in that book today, it's funny that you mentioned that. It's talking about that, that death. Death is coming and judgment is coming. And it, it, I haven't read this book in a long time. And so I'm just, I woke up at six in the morning today and I was just reading my Bible and reading this. And it's really fascinating. We don't realize what's coming. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I thought was interesting was from the book reading is the idea that, you know, take, don't worry about tomorrow, focus on today. And that, like what you mentioned, you know, taking those challenges and growing from them, taking the pain and agony that you face and not su succumbing to it, but mm -hmm. growing, growing in your faith and taking every critique, every challenge, every point in time of your life, I guess what you could call the season of death and growing, like, as you mentioned, and I think it's really good that you were able to do that because not a lot of people are able to face those challenges. A lot of young people just, they can't, they look at it and saying, I'm so weak. I can't like, but taking those repenting and also learning and turning to Christ. It's so, so important. Yeah, um, so, so true. true. Um, music going back to jazz. I wanted to ask you about this because, you know, since your roots were jazz, it would be appropriate to assume that you, you still enjoy some elements of jazz. There's a lot of guys that I know, I want to hear kind of, can you share the significance of jazz artists such as your father? I know Duke Ellington, I think you've listened to before and mm -hmm. John Coltrane, Kult I don't know his Coltrane, last name. Coltrane. Yeah. Coltrane. How these guys, yeah. How yeah. have these, your father and these two other gentlemen, uh, these artists that you've listened to, how, how would you say they've influenced your production overall? You know, I, I think the thing that I love about jazz or just music in general that I can deem that's great is movement. Mm -hmm. Music is all about movement. It's either the movements in the music are meant to move you emotionally. So like Coltrane, one of my favorite records from Coltrane is called In a Sentimental Mood. And it's mm -hmm. him playing the piano. And uh, I'm trying to think who's on the sax. I'm sorry, but it, it escapes me. But anyway, the movement of the record puts you in a mood. And that's what music, when it's at its best, it does that. That's why we love hip hop, right? We love hip hop mm. because it gets us excited, usually. The 808's smacking, you know what I mean? Everything is up tempo and it gets you excited to go to the gym or it gets you excited to go, you know, motivated to go talk to that girl, get muster up that energy to say, you know what, I'm, a, I'm feeling myself right now. Let me go say something to that girl. Like, that's what good music does. It creates movement. And that's why I like jazz, because it creates so many different types of movements and the moods are so different in, in, in jazz. That's why I enjoy it. It's so great, man. Like I, I really appreciate jazz. And a lot of the guys that I surround myself with with don't have the same appreciation for it. Yeah. And I, I enjoy it because again, it's a lot of movement and moving around. It's very sporadic. And I like I like unique things. And I find that jazz is the sampling playground. I, I love going through public domain libraries and just finding the craziest samples. It's just, again, jazz, like I, it's so cool to see how that impacted, you know, your roots and it's super cool. It's evident. You can see it a lot in your yeah. songs now. Um, but besides things that you love, like music and jazz, this is going to be a fun one. I know of some of the things that you hate. I know you hate filler episodes, the <laughs> fact that Apple removed the Mac touch bar, disposable music, yeah. but also musicals. You do not like musicals. Yeah. So if you were paid a lot of money to compose and write a musical, how would you want it to look like and why? If you were, if that, like, again, you hate musicals. I wanted to ask in here, what would you do if you were given the opportunity? It could be any form of musical. It could be something that we haven't even seen before. Right. So I'll put it this way. One, so when I said that I hated musicals, this was before I saw the Wonka musical. Ooh, okay. The new Wonka musical is crazy. Like, it's made me be like, man, you know what? Maybe I'm missing out and I need to go back because this Wonka, that Wonka movie is crazy. I enjoy it. But anyway, as far as a musical for me, it would need to be something that's like, it would, it would be cinematic. So it would be strings, brass, all those different things. But then it would be extremely electronic as far as the drums are concerned. It would be a fusion of electronic and um, uh, analog drums. So big, it would sound like my music production. Like, like when I make albums, I feel like I'm making a movie. Like right. every album feels like I'm scoring a movie. Uh, so it would probably just sound like one of my albums. 
Yeah, dude. I think it'd be cool to hear you do that. I think it'd be kind of fun to get a bunch of guys in a room and mm-hmm. make a musical that no one's seen before. Yeah. Like, I think it'd be really cool to make. And again, I'm not completely knowledgeable about musicals, but like an, an old school hip hop kind of oriented musical. And I think that'd be really cool um, to do that and kind of write a story um, with things that you love. This is going to be a fun one because I know you've talked about this a, a while back. You, you, you love a lot of things. Um, enjoy it. You love watching the Pistons. You love, you know, the MCU, but you also love alternative music. I know you oh, recently yeah. talked about how you opened up about that, how, oh, you know, alternative music. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, genre wise, you know, I, I have my preferences, you know, I, I love hip hop, you know, blues, you know, folk, yeah. you know, things like that. But there's some like really obscure music that I, I enjoy that's like unrelated. Um, and so with like music in general, would you say, are there any genres that, you know, you really enjoy, but not many of the people that you're, you know, close with or people that follow you know about? I'd love to hear about that. Oh, man, that's a good one. Uh, well, I mean, I like lo-fi. I okay. like uh, definitely alternative. Like, I'm definitely going to rock with all. Alter- the reason I like alternative is because you don't know what you're going to get in there. Like, you know, some stuff is going to lean more hip hop. Some stuff will lean more indie rock. And that's why I love alternative because it feels like it's the closest thing to jazz fusion. Mm-hmm. Which is you just blend whatever together and whatever comes out comes out. Um, I often go back to listening to old like blues records. Those are fun too. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I love the the drums on those old blues records because they're real sloppy. Like they don't they don't that you know somebody in Mississippi just going crazy. Um, but I can't think of any like really really obscure genres that I like. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have a cool record here. Um, I was just going through my collection. I inherited a bunch of records from like my my uh, great uncle. He passed away. I never met him, but he had like two crates full. Majority was country, but I have here. I was listening to it this morning. It's like a bunch of nuns, like <laughs> a bunch of nuns. Ah, just, that's lit. It's cr- dude. This is actually fire. It's actually from like, um, it was like done in Toronto or something, and it's got like a bunch of nuns playing the guitar and singing. Are they this killing is- it? They are, dude. This is sample worthy. There's some stuff on here. Um, Joy is like rain. I'm about to look that up. Yeah, dude. Oh, I cannot wait after the interview to show you some stuff. But now you mentioned brass earlier. You mentioned brass and that stuff. And that remind me, you again, you've worked with so many people. We could go on for hours about the experiences. But one was was just, I'm like, I got to ask you. Yeah. King's Kaleidoscope. Yeah. I don't recall times where you've talked. You must have talked about it here and there. But mm-hmm. King's Kaleidoscope, that's I've been listening a lot to that group. I don't know anybody here in this Canadian area in my little circle that knows of them, which is weird. Um, but I listen to them all the time. I've been listening to them a lot recently. And I would love to hear about that opportunity that you had. And also, you know, that experience, like that's a big group of people, very talented people. Have you, yeah. have they ever, you know, have they ever lended help to you? You know, any, anything like that? Like what was that experience overall? Yeah. So the drummer, Daniel Steele is yes. one of my favorite producers, period. Um, me and Daniel, matter of fact, I'm gonna call him after we get off of here and tell him how dope he is. Like, that's my dog. Like, his drums are crazy. So, we were, uh, see, I think I was out, me and Propaganda were out hanging in some obscure place out in the Pacific Northwest. And they were on tour, and that's how we met. And then Chad was like, yo, you should get on the record. So, they sent me the record, and the rest was history. And then also, recently, Prop uh, Propaganda and, uh, King's Kaleidoscope did a record and I actually mixed it. So it's a, uh, it was a fun record. Like I love, I love them again, alternative genre bending. Like they're all of the things that I love about music. <laughs> they're amazing, dude. It's like, it's really moving. And that's what I really enjoy. And I'm like, I'm looking for more music like them. I, I love for me when it comes to music, I'm really big into just discovering the unknown. Like a lot of things for me and how I operate is like, what are some like unknown things that nobody's heard of? So like that nun record, I don't know anybody who knows them. And I just, it's really cool. And there's a joy that comes from I gotta exploring. find it. I gotta find it on the internet. I'm looking for Dude, it. Dude, I'll send you, I'll send you a link if I can. Like there's a, I got a big collection. It's okay. It's really cool. And it's, it's really fun what you can do. And I, I've been really into like flipping stuff. And again, it's super weird doing music because I know for a fact that there's so many other better people out there. And I, and I just, I think for me, when it comes to music, and it must've been for you at times, 
doing music as an escape, like a way to, Definitely. you know, I, I do these podcasts, you know, I go to school, I'm in a Bible school right now. And you just like, what I, you know, it's like putting the paint on the canvas and you're just, you know, just kind of putting stuff there. You're not putting a lot of effort into it, but it's really yeah. fun in the end to create. Um, and so kind of like, not exactly wrapping up, but you know, for projects wise, you've done a lot. I would love to hear, you know, what's, what's in uh what's cooking right now. Do you have any fun projects, have any big aspirations? It could be outside of music. It could be a book, a film. It could be anything. Love to hear about that. Right now I got three music projects all cooking at the same time. So wow. it's super busy. The, the one that's coming out most recent is a project called highlight tapes where I make music for like TV and film for like sports. ESPN, NBA, NFL, et cetera, et cetera. And I get all my homies together and we just make sports anthems. So oh, that's man. coming out. I got a couple, I got an alternative record I'm working on with a, with a good friend. And then I got another hip hop record. So I'm a busy, busy man. That's that's all I got time for right now is making music though. It's crazy, man. And I get that. I mean, for me, I, I, I've been running this podcast throughout high school. And so it was hard, you know, it's hard. To, to, to do it you gotta like schedule you gotta organize and it's stressful man but yeah. it's important to to set your mind on god and relieve that stress and you know also find time i think for me the struggle is balancing my relationship with christ and getting into his word with yeah. the hobbies understanding what's more important and just kind of figuring out that balance but also figuring out how you can glorify and learn more about god yeah, through man. experiences because it's not just the bible it's not just taking experiences out completely and saying, you know, screw them. It's learning from those experiences too. Right. Um, and I kind of, I, I always kind of conclude with like a last question. You know, I ask all my guests, you know, okay. a, a lot of young people, a lot of older people listen to the show, you know, what's, what's some advice you would give, you know, to your younger self, to, you know, people, young people in general, if they want to be a music artist, if they want to be a lawyer, any, any career in general, what would be the, the advice you, you would say and give? You have to follow the thing that you would do for free. And I know that sounds very cliche, but the the reason why that's important, most people tell you to do that, but they don't tell you why it's important. Mm -hmm. It's that anything of significance is going to take a considerable amount of your time and your heart. So if you're trying to make it at something that you hate, you're gonna dedicate your whole life and a lot of hours to something awful, but if you're dedicating your life to something that has purpose and something that you love, it's going to be fulfilling. So that's the reason why you pursue something that you would do for free. The next thing I would say is discipline. You have to be disciplined. The difference between someone being talented and not living the career that they want to live and, and, and a person that got a great opportunity but blew it and the person that's here for 20 years is discipline. That's the difference. It's discipline. And the last but not least, I would say, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, like, but really be kind to yourself. And I know that sounds oxymoron as far as a Christian, because Christians are always about thinking outwardly. But the thing is, if you don't, the Bible says you should love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? But if you don't love yourself, then you're gonna treat your neighbor bad too, mm -hmm. right? You have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So that means that you have to be kind to yourself and then treat your neighbor like you would treat yourself. Absolutely.